motherhood is an amazingly difficult and hard thing to do uh, between the house, the children, and just everything. It can get so overwhelming. And the guest I have with me today, I wish I would have had when I was a young mother. Um, you may hear birds in the background, my husband on the tractor, or the children playing with the dogs. This is Real Life on the Prairie with Donita Fogelman of prairie-trail.com. And I am talking to you with a guest from half, almost halfway across the globe, uh, Jennifer Lovemore. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Donita. I'm really happy to join you. And yes, it's a long way over here, but we can join together thanks to technology. Yes, definitely. And you are in South Africa, right? Right. South Africa, yeah. yes. That That's quite a distance from Oklahoma. <laughs> right. And it's quite the different climate as well. We are in the height of summer and you guys are in the throes of winter. Yes. At the, yes. At this point. Yeah. Of course, Oklahoma never knows. We can have all of the seasons in one day here. Okay. <laughs> So it, we had snow yesterday and today's the sun the sun is out and there's a little bit of snow left but it kind of looks like desert out there at the moment it is still cold the fireplace is on so but <laughs> oh wow it's a right. lot of fun so i've actually been a part of your online facebook community for a while and mm -hmm. i've seen some of the things that you've had going through and I've thought oh my goodness I wish I would have had this whenever I was a new mom <laughs> what what all do you have going on well my 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 main focus is is moms who are feeling overwhelmed moms who are in the midst of raising their kids maybe they're homeschooling um Generally, they're a stay-at-home mom who has all these balls they're, tr they're trying to juggle. Sometimes they're trying to manage a, a business from home as well. And there's just a lot going on for them. And I'm here to support those moms because I myself, like you said, you needed this when you were young. Well, I needed me when I was young, you know, um, because I was overwhelmed. I was stressed. I, I was unorganized. I was not productive. I didn't plan anything. And my life was pretty much chaos. And the stress that resulted from that nearly, nearly drove me off the edge. And literally, I mean that. I nearly went over the edge. I could feel my mind was going to snap and something was not going to come right again. And that's when I got to the point of saying to the Lord, do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes to help me because I am desperate. And so I, I get moms who are in that position where they just feel like, they're doing the same thing every day and not seeing any results, you know, especially when your kids are young, you're just there, you're doing the same thing every day and it can be emotionally exhausting. It is physically exhausting and you often don't get the spiritual grounding or the support that you need because you don't have time to spend with God. And, you know, it's just a, a cycle that just kind of, snowballs and you end up in this situation where you're chaos so I'm here to try and help you get out help moms get out of that cycle of chaos and overwhelm and start making baby steps to getting order regaining control of their lives which is basically what I needed when I was young <laughs> Yes, that was definitely what I needed. I uh, we were just starting to get internet out here whenever I was a young mom with the first few. And uh I ran into Fly Lady. And mm. oh my goodness, it made such a huge difference, you know, to and she talks about the baby steps, you know, mm -hmm. with the housekeeping. And she puts the house in a particular order and she's got like zones in the house and all that kind of stuff. And I printed out everything I could possibly print out and put it in a binder and tried, you know, to go with that. But then, yeah, trying to have daily devotions and, 
you know, working with the children and having a business from home, it, it was, it was crazy overwhelmed. I love that you're trying to meet all of those needs from a mentorship perspective. That mm -hmm. is because that is, that's, that's what I needed. There were mentors out there for different things. So you had a mentor, you know, like fly lady or something to help you get organized with your house. And then you had some people that would help with like the homeschooling part of it. And then there were resources for, you know, daily devotions, small daily devotions for moms or something, but it, it's a juggle to try to mm -hmm. figure out which one, what to do, what time, you know, and just as soon as you feel like you're in some kind of a routine, then all, everybody gets sick or some catastrophe <laughs> happens. <laughs> Uh, and you know I, I so relate to that because like you say you just think you've got it together and you and you're getting your your life in order and then something happens to throw it all off course again and and what I learned to do was just you know pick up where you left off don't beat yourself up because you've you the, the, the whole thing has fallen apart just pick up where you were and start again baby steps this is life it's real it's a reality and having kids and trying to juggle all these things you're not it's not like working with a computer although computers can be challenging <laughs> I'd, I'd grant that but <laughs> um you know working with kids it's not a machine that you're working with you're working with a little human being and they have days and they have moods and they have challenges and they don't feel well and so sometimes you just have to go with the flow and then go back to where you were pick up where you left off and and you know, get going again. And whether it's whether it's today that you need to focus on your planning or or spending time with God or, or just forget about homeschooling today and let's just have fun and get ourselves back in an emotional um safe place or a happy place before we, you know, try and get back into schedule and routine and all the things that we're trying to do. So yeah. you know, I, I, I aim to meet moms where they are at, whether it is that they need spiritual help or um, parenting advice or please help me get my schedule sorted out because I'm, I've am i got too much going on and I don't know how to sort it. So wherever they, wherever a mom is at, that's, that is where I'm going to meet her um, and help her take those baby steps to get to where she needs to be and where she wants to be. Right. Well, and sometimes you just don't even know. Sometimes you're just in the middle of it and you don't even know what you need, you know, because right. people say, hey, what do you need help with? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I, I just, I remember those days that you're sleep deprived. You mm. may be eaten all day. You, you feel like you've done nothing but dishes and diapers all day right. long. Right. And you just don't even know what you need sometimes and you're just taking it a moment and not even a day at a time, just a moment at a time. And sometimes you just need grace because mm -hmm. that, you're just on, on a survival mode and you right. just need somebody to tell you you're doing a good job and give yourself some grace. Mm -hmm. I really like that, that you need, sometimes you need someone to just tell you, you know what, it's going to be okay. Give yourself some grace. And that's something that I think I failed on, for myself is that I didn't give myself grace. I, I had the standard of I've got to get it right all the time. And I did too. When you yeah. when you when you get when you just give yourself some grace and say, you know what, we had a bad day. So what? Tomorrow we'll start again. Tomorrow we'll pick up the pieces. Tomorrow we'll get back into routine. Today was a bad day. Well, so it was a bad day. It is what it is. And you know, I love that saying it is what it is. <laughs> And I wish I had learned it learned it long ago because, yeah, it you know it lets you off the hook sometimes. And I'm not saying that we should just forget about everything and do whatever comes and and not have any kind of goal that we're working towards as moms. But yes, yeah, sometimes we don't give ourselves the grace that we need. We offer it to other people, but we don't give it to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, and a lot of times that's our big problem is while we're juggling all of these things, we're also trying to volunteer at church or exactly. do these other things. And exactly. we have a 
saying no and setting boundaries and, you know, Mm -hmm. we've got family giving us pressure and, you know, you, you get pressure from so many different places. The worst pressure that we get is from ourselves. Absolutely. I, I was definitely harder on myself than I think anybody else was because Mm -hmm. I, like I needed to live up to a bunch of standards that I don't even think other people had for me, but that I put on myself for them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um, you said something just a moment ago that really caught my attention. Um, oh, yes. They were, they were so busy also as sometimes at church and we don't know how to say no. We haven't learned to say no to, to those kinds of things. And I, a woman reached out to me just the other day saying, you know, she just feels so overwhelmed and she doesn't know where to start and her schedule seems to be, she just feels this overwhelmed. So she, she she sent me a picture, a screenshot of her schedule and I looked at it and within a moment or two, I realized this is, she's got too much going on. And so I helped her sort through her priorities. What are her priorities? God first, then her husband, then her children then her home, and then other people. And she was f- trying to f- squeeze in a lot of ministry work and reaching out to other people. And I said, get your home base. Get your home base solid and sorted so that you can be at peace and work from rest instead of to rest. Yes. And so she, so she said, oh, okay, I realize I'm, I actually need to cut back. I need to cut back on my outreach and trying to trying to minister to people and make sure that I'm actually doing those things are all the most important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Once I realized those priorities and, and you laid it out exactly as it's laid out in the Bible, that is exactly mm-hmm. what the Bible gives us. Those are biblical principles. And right. once I figured out what those biblical principles were, okay, God first, husband second, my children, my home, and then the other stuff. As much as we want to do ministry I, and, and we all do mm-hmm. have all have a heart. We, we all want to help with ministry and we all want to reach the world and we all want to see everybody safe. Right. (laughs) But, but we've got to start at home because we can't do it at the expense of losing our children to the world. Right. And that example sometimes is what brings some people to the Lord eventually, because they see that constant, that you're constantly working on these things and and, and that example will show them. And, and I've had people ask, you know, how do you do it all? That's the big question. I always get, how do you do it all? And my first answer is I don't, (laughs) (laughs) you know, you, we always look at somebody else's life, you know, and it's always greener on the other side. And we see somebody else's life and we think, oh my goodness, they've got it all together. And it's not true. I don't care who you're Mm -hmm. looking at. It's not true. If they look like they've got it all together, there is some brokenness somewhere that you're just not. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's my first answer is I don't do it all. And I've learned to give myself grace. And here are the priorities that God has given me. And I fall apart every time those priorities get out of whack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really believe that when we put those that when we put those priorities in order and we and we make sure that we're meeting those priorities, God will bless us and as moms. And I think, so, though, I think when it comes to priorities, we so often, especially as stay-at-home moms, we so often feel like we're not doing anything of value. And we need to adjust our belief about what we're doing and and, and see it in the light that God sees it and give it the importance and the value that God gives it. And it, it is the most important thing we can do to take care of our children and our homes and those that are nearest to us. But we so often go chasing after um, things that will, we think will give us more satisfaction or get it, give us recognition or approval. And that is why we often cram our schedules so full because we've got to do something else to to help us feel better. And it was for me, it was... You know, st- being a stay-at-home mom and homeschooling for me was a very, um, how can I put it? It was humbling. And, you know, there were times when God had to say to me, 
just be quiet and stay at home and be willing to be in obscurity. Yes. Be, yes. be willing to be in obscurity because you are doing the most important work, even though no one else notices and no one else acknowledges what you're doing. What you're doing is the thing. Yes. That matters yes. the most. Yes. The the women in the Bible that are are my heroes in the Bible are the ones that prioritized everybody else. They probably had no idea that we would remember them today. Ruth mm -hmm. and um Samuel's mom. And Hannah. Hannah. Ruth and Hannah are are two of my favorites. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Hannah was just agonizing over, she just wanted to be able to have children, you know, just give me a child and was just heartbroken because she hadn't had any. And I felt that I, in between we had two, and then, um, we had a, a big break in between the other four children. And I, I felt that I wanted more children so badly that I could just, you know, it's heartbreaking to feel that. And so, yeah, I felt that. And she probably, you know, who, who would have believed, you know, if somebody would have told her, oh, don't worry about it. You and your child will be remembered hmm. for thousands of years to come. She would have never she was taking care of her child. She was taking care of her husband. She was crying out to who she needed to cry out to, to the Lord. She wasn't crying out to the community. She wasn't, you know, putting down her situation. She was just crying out to the Lord for the desire of her heart. And then Ruth was taking care of her mother-in-law. Her husband had died. She didn't have any children. She's just taking care of her mother-in-law. Wherever you go, I go. And, you know, I, I just, we, we do in, in our society is, is really big. I've been doing kind of a series this year. The Lord's been leading a series on strong women because that's mm -hmm. been kind of a big thing on social media and, uh, what is a strong woman and, uh, on TV series and stuff, they're, they're missing the mark on what a strong woman is and it doesn't work the way they're trying to make a strong woman look mm -hmm. because a strong woman is a woman of character mm -hmm. and a woman of character knows her place where she needs to be and the importance of her place in the world and that's not her place as a woman's place is in the home you know it, that's become so derogatory and that's mm -hmm. so sad that it's become derogatory but wherever god has placed you some women do don't have children so uh the bible says that they become mothers to many so god will bring children usually into their lives in some way shape or form i've seen that happen so many times we've had uh older women who weren't blessed with children who were able to help teach our children some things that I couldn't have taught them that was such a blessing on me, you know? So yeah, I, I just think that that home being able to take care of your family. I mean, so many of the problems in the world today are because mom wasn't home taking care of the family. I I know I struggled, I think partly because my mom wasn't there, you know, mm -hmm. she was working all mm -hmm. the time. She was busy and I'm not putting her down at all. Uh, that's what she had to do at the time, but we've been put into a place in society for where so many women feel like they have to put the children in daycare and they have to work and they have to do all these things. And then in or order to make up for that, they have to put these children in all of these activities and stuff. So you go mm -hmm. to work a day and then you've got all these activities you're doing with the children to make up for that time that you're not with them. And they're so overwhelmed with what, you know, is going on in their lives. Just 
like you said, that, that schedule that's absolutely full mm-hmm. and she doesn't have time to take care of herself. She doesn't have time to properly take care of her family. Her, her right. home is out of control. Her marriage usually suffers. And that mm-hmm. is so bad to see. And, you know, I think also we need to, moms need to get rid of the the guilt and the the comparison, the tendency to compare themselves to other women out there who are look like they have it all together and they're doing all these things and they're managing it all. Because like you said earlier, there's always something that's that's been sacrificed. If a mom yeah. is if a mom is busy outside of the home doing so many different things, and I'm not saying we can't be doing other things aside from home and children, but if it's if it's taking all of our extra time and taking all of our mental space and energy and emotional energy, it's giving us less to, to, to give to those that are our first priority. And so we look at others, we compare ourselves and we say, oh, but she's doing so much. And how does she do that? And I'm not doing anything. But but we need to learn to, to like Mary, sit at Jesus' feet. Yes. And hear his word to us. What is his word to me? What does God want me to do? What does he want me, where does he want me to serve? And and ditch the comparison because what what is out there isn't necessarily happiness. And what we see other women doing isn't necessarily fulfilling and satisfying. They may be so stressed out because they're trying to do too much and, and, and seeking after fulfillment and satisfaction and longing and whatever in places that don't really give it. So... We need to really ditch the comparison thing and and yeah. and seek. You know, I love I love Galatians one. I think it's Galatians one verse ten that says, "If we seek to please man, we won't please God, and if we seek to please God, we won't please man." That's basically I'm summarizing. I'm paraphrasing it. Yes. But our our goal needs to be: What does God want me want me to do? What yes. is His will? Yes. And and, and not- don't try and be someone else someone else and that's not at the expense of your happiness people think oh if I'm constantly trying to make God happy then I'm not going to be happy and that's Mm -hmm. not true at all because Mm -hmm. in making God happy that's what's fulfilling because what God wants for us is for us to take good care of ourselves and for us to have a healthy mental state healthy physical Mm -hmm. state a happy, a healthy marriage and happy, healthy children. That's what mm-hmm. God wants. He wants mm-hmm. us to be fulfilled. So if we concentrate on, because he knows the best way for that to happen, because each family and each woman and each child is unique, completely different. So when we start comparing we're not comparing apples to apples. You're comparing apples to oranges or grapefruit or celery <laughs> <laughs> because each family is completely different. We've got, right. I mean, you know, we've got six children and they're each a completely different personality. So I can not homeschool each one of them exactly the same way. Mm-hmm. And some of them liked out side the house activities and some of them like to stay home you know and then I had uh, I've had health problems that I've dealt with so I really had to schedule things so that I had plenty of rest time in between things Mm -hmm. you know so there was no every week we're gonna go do this or that because I couldn't physically keep up with that Mm -hmm. Once mm-hmm. I gave myself that grace and understood that need, things became so much easier, you know, and, and yeah, mm-hmm. the guilt, it's just like, no, this is what I need. And God knows what I need and he's going to take care of it. And I realized, you know, we're not going to do anything perfect. We are not going to be perfect parents ever. And we are going to fail, but where I failed, God took over. Mm-hmm. And, and he took care of that. And if I would give myself that grace to fail and let him take care of it, then 
thing, things worked out. And I, I've been amazed at what our children, and now we're starting to have grandchildren. So we've got two that are married and starting their own families and their little mommies of their own. And I've been so proud. You know, if you'd have told me 20 years ago that they're going to be excellent wives and mothers, I would have thought, how on earth am I going to do that? Well, I'm not. I didn't do it. God did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think if we just realize, you know, that doesn't take responsibility off of us. We still have mm -hmm. responsibility to do what we need to do. But we, we're not doing this all of ourselves. God mm -hmm. does it. Once we take that load off and not feeling like we have to do it all that God is there to help us and he's going to take care of things, then it, it, it just, it becomes not as much of a pressure, you know? Hmm. I think it really boils down to, to allowing God to be in control, allowing him to be in charge of our lives, to lead us, direct us daily. And that is, that is for me, I think the biggest lesson I learned in life because I'm a pretty anxious person and I stressed a lot about a lot of stuff, I had to learn to just take all my cares and my worries to God, leave them with him and leave them with him as many times as I needed to throughout the day. Lord, I give this to you. I surrender myself to you. Lead me, guide me, give me the wisdom I need so that God can, you know, when we surrender ourselves into his hands, we put ourselves in his hands, then he can parent through us. He can work through us. And we don't have to be, doing all these things to try and meet a mark or a standard that someone else has set for us. I am me and I've had to learn to accept that I am me and I have limitations. I also have health challenges. I have energy issues that I, I run out of energy and then I'm done. And, I, and you know, I have burnout and all these, all these challenges. So I've had to learn, I can't do what everybody else does. And that's okay. That's okay yeah. because I am me and God made me me and he understands me and he knows exactly what I can cope with, what I need to do. And on top of that, God, God has a plan for my life that is unique and specific and, and he has a place for me to minister for him and to work for him that is unique to me. And yeah. it's not going to be the same as anyone else's place and I'm not going to do the same things that anyone else does. But I had to learn that over time, and and I but I first had to learn to be submitted to him, to be quiet, to be led by him, to be guided by him, to be willing to do the everyday dull, boring, mundane stuff, and do it day after day after day, and year after year after year. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, and developing those skills and talents that that I'd been developing at home where nobody was seeing. Right. So well and God and also God knows. begins to expand that ministry. Yes, and he gives us children knowing what our limitations are. So the personalities and stuff that he places in our lives are perfectly matched for our limitations. So wow. giving it over to him is, I mean, it, it's a perfect fit. And if we can just see, see his plan, you know, just that little bit of his plan and how he's going to cover it, then it, it makes a huge difference. Well, tell, how do we find you? How, how do people find you? Well, I'm on Instagram as growing moms, growing underscore moms. So if you could, you can go and follow me there and um, I'm also on Facebook as Growing Moms and I do have a free offer that I'm, I'm promoting at the moment which is my 33 ways to be more productive and it's not what you think it is <laughs> like get do this and do that and whatever it's more about yes it is about getting organized but it is also about learning to rest so that you can be more productive because less sometimes less is more so I'm um, yeah. I could give you the link for that and you could advertise that. Yeah, I will um, put that in, in the description or yeah, down in the whatevers for, for people to get that definitely. <laughs> in, the, in the, in the show notes. Yeah. Or yes. in the description. Yes. So I, I also have a web, my website is lovemoretolive.com. 
Um, love that's where I put love more to live dot com. I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. So, some people ask me, like, you know, did you start? Did you start your ministry uh, because of because of your name? Because my son, my last name is Love More. And I was like, no, I think God orchestrated that. Love more. That's the whole, that's the whole um, idea of my ministry is to love more, love God more, love your spouse more, love your children more, love others yeah. more. So yes, yeah. <laughs> I think God is a that's sense of humor. <laughs> anyway, I, I digress. So so yeah, you can find me on the website. You can find me on Instagram as Growing Moms and uh, Growing underscore Moms um, on Facebook as Growing Moms. And then, yeah, I also have a personal growth for, for moms group on Facebook. Personal Wonderful. Growth for moms of faith, yes. Okay. Okay. We'll make sure all those links are in the description. And thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate this. This has been a wonderful visit. We may have to have you back again. I, I hopefully oh, I'd this be happy to. Now, hopefully this has been a good encouragement because like I said, this, th yes, this is the encouragement I needed whenever I was a young mom. So I've, I've been so excited about your ministry because I can see the need for it. Definitely. Mm. Okay. Well, and thank you, thank you so much for having me. Oh, yes. I, and if you haven't subscribed to the magazine yet, pop over to, uh, prairiedusttrail.com and subscribe to the magazine um, I've also got some freebies there. If you want to subscribe to the uh, newsletter, I, we've got free things that, that we do there as well. And uh, remember that you can make it through the dust storms of life with God's divine help. <laughs>